Here are my top four business mistakes that I made as a videographer. First is one-stop shop. In the first year of my business, I noticed when somebody reached out to me for a video of an event, wedding, birthdays, they were also looking for photography, photo booth, and DJ. So as a person who has a lot of ambition, I did almost all of them. I mean, except the DJ part. And when I did, my business was going nowhere because I'm getting known with nothing. I was the jack of all trades who can do everything and mastered nothing. The people were so confused on what I really do. Now, that's only in the events industry. But when it comes to business leaders, I was offering them not only videography but also a lot of things like social media management, building websites, creating landing page, logo design, and marketing. They were so confused what to buy from me and I was getting pulled from different directions. And in the end of the year, I built nothing. One day I was listening to Bob Proctor and he said if you are struggling in the business, you have to write down and answer these three questions. First, what are you doing? What works? And what doesn't work? So I wrote down all my answers and here's what I got. He said, take the list of what doesn't work and burn and forget about them. Get the list of what works and just focus on it. Do it every single day. The meaning of what works for me is the thing that makes the most amount of money in my business. And the answer I got was videography. So I focus all of my time, effort, and resources in being a videographer. The next year, I doubled my income. Like it worked. Doing one thing is easy to do, but doing a lot of different things make it confusing. I realized that I can only focus on learning one skill at a time. And for me, it was being a videographer. It takes time to master a skill, like in the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell talked about 10,000 hours of practice to master a skill. So if I was in a field of filming, editing, and delivering videos for 8 hours a day, it will take me 4 years to get to 10,000 hours. But if I work in my craft for 16 hours in a day, it will only take me 2 years if I'm just doing one thing. This is my seventh year in the business and I'm convinced that the idea of 10,000 hours of practice is accurate. Moving on to the second business mistakes I made was partnership. When I was starting out, I made this mistake big time because I didn't know the game yet. I partnered with someone I trusted. We agreed that I'll run the video production from filming, editing, and delivering videos and my business partner will bring clients. We got our first recurring client that pay us monthly fee in exchange for I think it was 8 YouTube videos at the time because there were no short form videos and the business started to get money. My business partner told me not to spend the money because we're going to reinvest it in the business. My partner explained to me that a business is like a newborn baby. We need to take care of it, give our full attention to it, and we need to feed the baby. I agreed because that sounds right. But I only have one problem. I was broke as hell. I just quit my job, I had no savings, and I can't pay my bills. I was the only one running the video production and I got burnt out. My health started to decline. This was not fun and I really wanted to quit. Thankfully, my business partner got off track with other businesses and we only lasted for 3 months. It was terrible and I burnt that bridge with that person. I was asking myself, why do I want to partner up with other people? Oh, because I was trying to skip the sales process. I had this thing in my mind saying I'm not good in sales. I really don't like talking to people. I don't want to get rejected. I just want to film and edit videos. I'm the guy behind the camera and if you're thinking that kind of guy too, that's fine. You can find an editing job but I'm just telling you right now, you won't be able to build a business with that mindset. I was skipping the most important thing to make a business work which is sales. Without a customer, I have no business. I had a lot of limiting beliefs in myself. I had a lot of excuses. I was afraid of selling because I didn't know what sales was all about. I found out that sales is all about solving someone's problem and once I solve that problem, then that person can pay me because I'm now adding value to him or to his business. So once I grasp that belief that I'm adding value to people, that I'm an asset, not a liability, I start to have the courage to talk to people about their struggle in their business and, and I found most business people need 
leads in their business. So my solution was to create monthly videos that gets attention that might turn into leads because making videos consistently creates attention that get leads. Since I was actively searching for clients and honing my video skills, I noticed there were people who wanted to partner up with me because they want free videos from me and they don't know how to get clients. So they were hoping that I can bring clients to them. So I declined all of them. Close my door to partnership and focus on getting clients, honing my video skills and making my money right. What I learned from my experience was I can't make partnership work because I was financially broke. I had no business acumen. I had no business skills. I need to fix myself first before I entertain someone to partner up with me because if I'm broke inside, I know I'm only attracting broken people. Guys, if someone asks you to partner up with you and you are in the early phase of your business, I suggest you don't do it because nobody is going to save your business but you. Nobody has a best interest in you or your business other than yourself. Get bigger in your video production first before considering partnership. Remember this, big players always want to play with big players. Six years later, we have partners in the business who bring clients in our video production and we also bring clients to them and it's beneficial for all of us. So here are the things that I'm looking for for the right partners. First, they should master skills that I don't have. Second, they have been in the business for 10 years or more. Third, they should have a good credibility in the community. Fourth, they make more money than me. And fifth, their business should be bigger than mine. The only thing I always remind myself when having partnership is partnership is not cool it's not sexy there are a lot of disagreements along the way and it's messy it's like getting married or having a serious relationship to someone moving on to my third biggest mistake was letting go of my clients and burning the bridges guys i'm not proud of this that's why i don't like you to have this mistake as much as possible i make friends with my clients but sometimes it's too much that's why I'm getting attached to them and I'm getting too emotional in my craft. Most of the time, I'm taking it too personally. That's why I had clients that I let go and never went back to work with them again. But looking back, it was a childlike attitude. I was immature in the business and I lost thousands of dollars because of this attitude. Those clients that I let go, they're still working with other video production on a daily basis. So the number one reason why I let go of my clients and never work with them again because I was taking it personally. The second reason why I let go of some of my legacy clients was growth. I wanted to work with bigger projects. I wanted to spend most of my time with high paying clients. There will come a time where you will feel that you are in the next chapter of your business and you should move on. But you should not turn down your legacy clients. This is what I do now. Since I have legacy clients who still want my video service from time to time, I don't decline it. Instead, I send someone to film them and send the videos to my video editor. That way we can still have a solid relationship and I'm still the number one video guy in their list because I know my legacy clients are business people who know and meet new people in a daily basis. Guys, this is a people's business. My number one strategy in growing my business is through word of mouth. I always treat my clients like he's gonna be my last. This is not one-time project. I want my clients to keep using my video production. And in my experience, these legacy clients or small video projects saved my business when I lost my high-paying clients. That's why my last business mistake as a videographer was relying in one big monthly recurring client. This was a huge mistake for me because once that big client canceled, there was nothing I can do to recover that big chunk of income. I have monthly recurring clients since 2017, so I knew this mistake very well. In my experience, monthly recurring clients can last for four months to a year. Whether they sign a contract or not, if they get bored or didn't see any results in that time frame, they will cancel their contract in creating video content. And there's nothing I can do about it because like I said, I don't anymore burn bridges with my clients. What sucks about relying in one big client was I always make sure that one big client was always happy and we're getting results. Most of the time, it feels like I'm an employee that always say, yes sir, yes ma'am. 
I'm always available. I can do that for you. I know I'm in a wrong spot. In 2021, I had that big client. It was 80% of my total income. I was seeing sunshine and rainbows, but after seven months, that client canceled and my business started to fall down. Big time. I had an income sheet every year. So looking back, I survived because of the small projects and legacy clients I had. Remember this, you're still in the business if you don't quit. If you're still on the move and helping other clients and your camera and gears are not for sale, you're still in the business. When that happened to me, I told myself I will never ever rely on one big client again. Never. That's why to this day, I still do weddings, live events. I'm still subcontracted by University of Calgary. I have corporate clients and I have three recurring clients. If one of my recurring clients quit today, it will not affect my business because my income is already diversified.